Hey kids, guess what? It's Noodle November. My name is Michelle and I want to thank you for visiting Big Valley Living. I am going to make a retro recipe out of a cookbook that was published not long before my retro house was built and it is sure to be a crowd pleaser. So I am going to turn these ingredients into this. Let me tell you a little bit about Noodle November. This is the second one that Big Valley Living has taken part in, and it's graciously hosted by Tony at Kettle Kitchen. Thank you for inviting us, Tony. The recipe is quite simple. It's called Home Front Macaroni, and the idea when they developed this recipe back before 1950, because that's when my cookbook was published, was to get the most bang for your buck and not have to use too much meat because back in World War II, they actually had rations for certain foods. So I thought, you know what? Food is getting quite expensive for us in, in these days and times too. So let's go and let's take some ideas that our grandmothers and maybe even our great grandmothers might have been using. Doesn't that sound like fun? So Noodle November is gonna run the entire month. So some shows have already been dropped and there will be more running all the way through November 30th. Make sure to watch all the videos, consider subscribing to the channels, and every time you leave a thoughtful comment in each person's video, you increase your chances of winning a really fun prize at the live giveaway, which is gonna be held on December 3rd at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you attend the live giveaway on Kettle Kitchen's channel on December 3rd at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, you will be able to enter hashtags and interact with people in the chat and have all kinds of fun. So make sure that you increase your chances, not only by leaving fine comments for people, but also by going to the live. Make sure as you're watching all of the channels that you see the logo right here and also that you see the hashtag noodle november 23 all of those are going to ensure that you're seeing the right channels that have been put into the playlist where's the playlist michelle well you know what i'm going to put it in our description right here you can also find the playlist at kettle kitchen let's get started we're only going to use two pots for this meal too so and on top of everything else as easy as it is as as all of the ingredients that we have are things that we would normally just have around our house and in the kitchen and pantry, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. And you know what? On a busy weeknight, on a cold winter evening, there's nothing better than something that doesn't take you a long time. That gives you more time to snuggle in front of the fireplace. Again, these ingredients are very, very simple. We have a half a pound of small macaroni and that equals just about two cups or a half a box if you buy them in boxes. We need two and a half cups of cooked tomatoes and we have some nice home canned tomatoes that I want to use up. It may end up being a little bit more but that's okay. We have an onion, we have that half pound of sausage and we're using Italian sausage, a mild Italian sausage. We also have salt, pepper, or Worcestershire sauce, a bell pepper, one bunch of celery, which is gonna equal one cup. That's what the recipe calls for. And then we're gonna have some shredded cheddar cheese for the top. It really can't get much easier. So you know what? We are gonna go ahead and set up at the stove. All right, now off to the side, I do have about an eight quart pot of water and I'm keeping it warm, but I'm not gonna worry about making my macaroni according to the manufacturer's direction until I have the uh, main pot simmering with all of the other ingredients. The first ingredient is a little bit of oil and you wanna get your pan warm. I actually had mine on my electric stove at about six uh, for about a minute, a minute and a half. And then I put my oil in. You can see that it's moving around nicely. So here we go, here's our chopped onion. It says to cook until yellow. Not a term we are used to using these days. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna cook it for a couple minutes, but because our sausage is not cooked, 
I'm actually gonna add that in as soon as the onions start to break apart a little bit. Little tip for you, you actually don't need oil when you're cooking onions. You could just use a little bit of water, but I'm gonna follow this recipe as closely to the instructions as I can. I am having so much fun. I'm wearing my grandmother's brooch. I'm wearing my grandmother's little um, apron that her mother made for her when she married my grandfather. And then I'm also wearing one of her scarves. And you guys aren't gonna believe this, but it's true. I've had it in the jewelry cabinet um, that you know she left behind, and it still smells like her perfume. How sweet is that? So I'm having a lot of fun tonight. The tiara is courtesy of my friend George, as well as the magic spoon. We decided to have a lot of fun with this video. I really hope you all enjoy it. And I hope my husband likes this recipe because I started reading, I said, oh, one of my least favorite foods, one of my least favorite foods in the world is goulash. <laughs> this looks like a goulash recipe to me. So he's pretty excited to see how it tastes. You guys, this is hilarious. I have really never paid attention to the onions until they get to the caramelized stage. But you know what? This yellow onion, as it cooks, is actually turning yellow. So on that cue, I think it's time to put the sausage in and get that cooking. So I'm just gonna bring it right on over here. See how I cleared uh, well in the center of that. I don't really wanna touch the sausage. And there we go. That's a half a pound of sausage. And remember, the idea here is that we're making all of these basic ingredients stretch so we can feed our families. Well, here's something they probably didn't have in the 50s. But by golly, we do, and we're gonna use it today. This is a nice little gadget that'll break the meat up. And while this is simmering and coming together, I am actually going to prepare the other ingredients. It does smell good, I will tell you that. Yes, sir, Bob. Now, periodically, you're gonna wanna come in here and make sure that the sausage doesn't stick to the pan. And in this case, I am also going to, woo, make sure you get all that goodness, it's only half a pound. Turn my heat down to about four and a half, because this pan retains heat, and uh, it could easily get out of hand. So, there we go. I'm just gonna set that aside now because it's all broken up. And once that sausage is just a little more cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and bring those onions right back into it and add the other ingredients. Okay, before I drain my tomatoes, I just have to show you. I even have this nice old uh, jar lifter here to open up my jar. Woo, did you hear that? That's what you want to hear when you open up canned tomatoes. And here we go. Starting to cook together nicely. And oh goodness, you guys, this smells really good with this mild Italian sausage. You know, you can also use ground beef or ground turkey if you wish. Of course, ground turkey wasn't a thing back then, but you do you, okay? And then you would just want to make sure that you maybe added a, just a little bit of extra fat if you were going to make this with ground turkey or chicken, I guess, too. Okay, oh, look at that. I'm gonna go ahead at this point because, oh, I'm flinging, I'm flinging food. Flinging food, kid. I've gotta tell you, for such humble ingredients, oh, look at that, look at that nice fond in there, too. For such humble ingredients, this really smells good. JJ just went out back with the dogs He's gonna get some firewood so we can sit in front of a fireplace a little bit. And I'll tell you what, he walked in and it's warm in here. He said, my God, that smells good. So that's what we wanna hear when we're the one that's making the food. Okay, so I had two quarts of um, cooked tomatoes, right? Cause I had them in the pantry that we had canned last year. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, there's a little juice in here and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in there. So it ended up, instead of two and a half cups, I have three cups. Hey, that's okay with me. I love tomatoes. And we'll be breaking these up 
and they we we use these a lot. They break down real nicely. Again, I'm going to turn this heat up to seven so I can get all of the ingredients nice and incorporated. I think at this point it would be a good time to put in our teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to measure with my heart here and I reserve the right to add just a tiny bit more if I feel like it. And let's get our little retro Tupperware salt and pepper shakers, huh? Why not? Calls for a half a teaspoon of pepper and two teaspoons of salt. I'm just going to kind of go as as we cook, but I'm going to tell you something. We don't we put like maybe a quarter teaspoon of salt in our tomatoes. We we have pretty good control over that. We know exactly what we have because we can our own. Okay. So, again, I've turned my stove back up to seven. I've added my flavors and my tomatoes. Let's put the rest of the ingredients in here. One cup diced celery, preferably in the pan and not on the side of the stove. And three quarters of a cup of a bell pepper, nicely diced. I want to show you guys this really super cool cup. Look at, I am trying to go as retro as possible today. <laughs> I love this. This is from Fire King. I've never even heard of that brand, but it's a lot of fun. I am having a blast with Noodle November. Thanks again, Tony. I'm stretching myself here. This isn't going to be real spicy at all, I can tell you, but it does smell good. Now, we've got everything together in here and I need to simmer this for 45 minutes covered. So I'm going to bring it up to a, a little bit higher heat. Get my little lid out. And I really kind of want to boil a little bit of that off of there. All right, I am happy with this. We can always boil it off at the end there if we want. Now I'm going to go ahead and cover this. I'm going to turn it down to a simmer, which on my stove means about three and a half. We're going to cover it. Oh, look at that. And I want to show you guys from Truly Taylor Designs on Etsy. She made this for us, our friend Taylor, when we very first started our channel. And I just love using these tools. I have a link to her uh, Etsy page down in my description. Christmas is coming, everybody. In true fashion, I want you to make sure that you're saving all your scraps in a bag. And like, you know, you can't feed peppers and uh, onions to chickens. They, it's not good for their digestive systems. But for the next week, I'm actually gonna save all of my scraps, my carrot scraps, mushroom bottoms, anything that I take off, put them in a freezer, and then I'm gonna turn it into a nice vegetable stock um, on a nice winter day. And I'm gonna can it, and we're gonna have it on the shelf. And all it was was discards from the kitchen. A little tip for you. Um, this, this right here needs to cook for 45 minutes. So what I did was I've got my warm water, but I set this for 38 minutes, okay? And when it hits the 38 minute mark and, and the timer goes off, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my water up and boil my noodles because guess what? They need to boil for seven to eight minutes. Huh? What? Look at that vibrant color. Good night, that looks good. Still juicy, okay. Now, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have left a little more of my tomato juice in there, uh, but I, I did turn it down to about two and a half. Um, oh, I don't know, maybe about, when there was still about 25 minutes left. And so it's just cooked through, kind of stewed. I cooked my macaroni according to the manufacturer's instructions. I'll let it go and I got it to the al dente stage okay now the instructions say that you can add oh look at this the instructions say that you can add parmesan or cheddar cheese you know cheese of your choice really so I've grated up about two cups of cheese a little under two cups that's gonna be your choice right but again I've got my broiler on and 
This is going to be really good. I'm just putting it in there long enough to get the cheese to melt. I need to wave the magic spoon over all this. <laughs> Let me tell you what. On second thought, this is already melting. <laughs> I'm just going to put the lid back on, turn the heat off, and let the cheese melt. My goodness gracious, I mean, there's not even a reason to put the oven on. <gasps> oh my gosh. Look at the magic. Look at the magic. You're getting a bowl because why? That's how you roll. I get a bowl because that's how I roll. I don't know. Um, it's really hard to see looks super yummy. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks again for watching uh, our installment of Noodle November. JJ is like wanting to eat and he usually cools his food down a little bit early, but not tonight. No, I'm hungry. Is it good? And this is super good. <laughs> Does it taste like goulash, like my mom's um, goulash? So, hey. You know what it tastes like? More. <laughs> yep. I'm glad you like it. Thanks again, everybody. We've had a lot of fun tonight making this retro recipe. And it's fun because we live in a house that was built in the 50s. That is super hot right there. Thanks a lot for coming by Big Valley Living. Don't forget to go and check out the playlist below. Go watch all of the other Noodle November 23 videos. Thank you again, Tony. And let's, uh, let's make a date to meet each other at 4 p.m. Pacific time, December 3rd on Kettle Kitchen's channel. Be kind. See you later, everybody. Be kind. <laughs>